So if you're anything like me and you've got a SketchUp model like this one, sometimes you feel like the final result that you have can be a little bit boring and you want to spice it up by adding a little bit of a background, something that looks a little bit more realistic to your models. However, the built-in SketchUp styles are kind of limited in that way. So in this video, we're going to talk about a few different ways that you can add backgrounds to your SketchUp models in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so when you're adding backgrounds, the first thing you have to think about is what you're trying to do. So. Um, this first method is going to be the simplest. It's really good if you have a view like this one. So let's say I save a scene and I want to get back to it. So what we want to do is we want to add an image in the background that looks like sky. And so in this case, I've got a cloudy sky image that I've downloaded from Wikimedia Commons. Um, so you can find that it's under photo sleuth as the author. You can find that and download it and follow along if you want to. But it's basically just an image of the sky. Well, the simplest way to do this is just to import that image. So you can do that by doing a file, import, and you can just find that image, click on it and import it as an image. So that's gonna be the easiest way. You could also just drag it in from Windows Explorer, but we're gonna import that and it's gonna ask us to place this image. So in this case, I'm just gonna click right here. It doesn't really matter because we're gonna resize it. But what we can do is we can take that image and we can rotate it. So I'm gonna tap the Q key, then the right arrow key, I'm gonna rotate it up like this. Well then, what we can do is we can just scale it up until it's the size that we want. Now you do have to be a little bit careful with this to make sure the scaling on all of this looks right. So for example, these clouds could look massive depending on what you're trying to do. I think this actually looks pretty good, so I think we're okay, but you can also kind of play around with the size by moving it closer to or further away than your building like this. So if you're doing something strictly like this, where you just need a background, putting a plain image is a simple way to do this. And so sometimes though, you might want something that's a little bit more, um, I don't wanna say comprehensive, but something that kind of curves around a little bit. And so again, we're running into this issue, right? Where this is just a square thing in the background. And so um, what we might do instead is we might add a curving background by drawing a circle. So. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and erase this image out for right now, and I'm just gonna use the circle tool. So I'm gonna tap the C key, I'm gonna click, and I'm just gonna draw a circle like this. Then I'm gonna push pull it up a little bit. So I'm gonna delete this top face, I'm gonna delete the ground, and I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna reverse the faces. And in this case, I'm only really worried about it being on this half. So what I might do is I might come in here and I might just draw a line in order to split this like this and erase out this extra. So now I've got this thing that kind of curves around here, right? And so in this case, let's say I had that image and I wanted to import it. So I'm gonna do a file import. Well, this time I'm gonna bring this in as a texture. So I'm gonna click on import. And then notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow me to single click and move my mouse on this surface like this. Now we've got a little bit of a problem, right? If we go into our material section of our tray and sample this and then reapply it to this surface, it's mapped okay, but we need to make it bigger, right? Because the tiling is way too pronounced in here. So the way that we can make it bigger is we're gonna come in here and we're actually going to um, adjust this so that it's a bigger image. So in this case, I'm gonna type in a value of like a thousand feet like this. And so notice what that does is that makes this image larger and your tiling is way over here. So um, that worked out pretty nicely where this is gonna work as a background image. And the cool thing about this is we can make this face bigger by taking this, this line right here and moving it up and down. So I can select this line, move it up and down, or in this case, we're just gonna move it down like this. Well, now what we've got is we've got this curving image that goes behind our house that gives us a much wider range of clouds in here. And so one thing that may happen, um, just depending on how this is mapped in here, is this may come in here and you might get this seam like right in the middle of the curve, right? Which is not ideal. Um, so what you can do is I use an extension called Fredo Tools. Fredo Tools has a tool inside of it called through paint that basically gives me tools for UV painting. That's basically tools that allow me to control how textures sit on surfaces. So I can link to it in the notes down below. You can download it from Sketchication. I think this one is still free, but basically what this one allows me to do is I can select a material and then I can translate it on this surface so that it's mapped properly. 
So if you run into any issues with anything like this, I highly recommend Fredo tools um, because notice how as soon as we do that, this texture image actually looks really good in the background. The other thing it will let you do is if you want to, you can adjust the size of that texture kind of live on that surface, depending on where you're at. Um, in order to get a better result. So that just gives me a better result around the outside right here um, for my background image. Okay, so one piece I'm gonna mention, but I don't necessarily recommend is you can, and I'm gonna take this whole thing, I'm gonna hide it, but you can go into the 3D warehouse or some other places as well and look for what's known as a sky dome. So a sky dome is basically a dome that uh, you can put over your model. So it's basically a, call it a 180 degree dome. And so if I download this, like this Ellen Sky Domes and bring it in, notice what this is, is this is like a full on dome with that texture applied to it. The, the positive of that is what it does is it's gonna give you an actual 360 degree view in here of that sky so it goes all the way around so there is definitely a positive to using that personally i think finding those dome files is a little bit more trouble than it's worth i don't necessarily recommend that you do that but you definitely can do it if you decide that you want to um, another way that you can add backgrounds is you can also use the styles function so i'm gonna go back to this scene i'm gonna add a new scene right here and we're gonna hide this in this scene. But what you can do is you can go into your styles and use what's known as a watermark. So if you go into your styles, notice how if we go into the edit tab, there's different uh, there's different settings in here. Well, one of them is your background settings. Well, we don't want that because that's just gonna allow us to set our color, right? Um, that doesn't really help us um, unless you're trying to do something simple like this. What we wanna do instead is we wanna go into the watermark settings. We wanna add an image as a watermark. So if I click on the plus button right here and then I select my cloudy sky image, what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow me to add this either as a background or an overlay. So I'm gonna call this sky, but I can select either background, which is gonna put this image behind my model or overlay, which is gonna be over the top. Well, in this case, since it's a background, we want it to be the background, right? So we're gonna click on next. And in this case, we're not gonna worry about creating a mask. Um, and we're not gonna worry about transparency. So obviously that would make this more transparent. We don't really want that. We're just gonna click on next. And so notice what this is gonna do is this is going to let us select how this image is placed on our scene, right? So we could set it so that it tiles, but we don't necessarily want that. What we want is the option for it to stretch to fit the screen. But in this case, notice how there's a gap in here. That's because it's trying to maintain the aspect ratio of the image. Well, in this case, I'm just gonna uncheck the box for lock aspect ratio. What that's gonna do is that's gonna make it so it can stretch this image so that it goes in the background right here. Well, now if we look at this, notice what this is doing is no matter where we go in here, this is just like a fixed image in the background like this. So. Um, you can use this in order to place this more as like a photo in there. You do have to be a little bit careful of your angle, but, and again, notice if I zoom way out, this is still just sitting back here as an image. So this is actually a pretty good way to do this. If you're looking for a click for a quick, uh, sky model in your background. The only thing to be aware of here is you are going to have to play around with your model in order to get the angle to look right. It's really easy to get the angle looking wrong when we do it this way. So now let's talk about a couple more advanced ways of doing this. So the first way, and we haven't really talked about this yet, is this is not going to go into a rendering software, right? So even if I have this watermark, let's say I was to take this and I was to send it to something like Twin Motion. All right, so if we jump over into Twin Motion when I export this model, notice how that image doesn't show up, right? That's because that's something that actually lives inside of SketchUp as a watermark, it doesn't live in your rendering image. Now, if you use the first couple of methods where this is actual geometry with a texture applied to it, your background will show up. But most rendering engines, and this is how I recommend you do this if you're trying to render something, most rendering engines are gonna have some sort of an option to add a background. So like Twin Motion, for example, has sky backgrounds. So if I pick like an afternoon sky, so like this one right here, I just drag it in and I add that directly inside of my rendering program. And so not to get too far in the weeds inside of your rendering program, but notice how their skies actually sit in the background and they're actually designed to add light 
and create shadows inside your model like this. So most of the time, if you actually need to render out your image and add a background, I recommend you use whatever your rendering program has built in. V-Ray has something like this. Inkscape has something like this. Lumion has something like this. So in general, I don't recommend trying to add the backgrounds in SketchUp and then bring the SketchUp backgrounds to your rendering program. Instead, I recommend that you set up your actual backgrounds um, inside of your rendering program so that you get better realism. All right, and then the final method is actually something you can do a little bit more advanced stuff with, but that's to actually export without a background into a photo editing software. So let's say, and we're gonna go ahead and remove this. I don't think the watermark actually shows up um, when we do this, but we're gonna go ahead and remove that anyway, just for what we're showing right now. But in this case, what you might do is you might do a file export and you can export a 2D graphic. And so what you might do or what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure you export this as a PNG file. And it's really important that you go into your options and you check on the box for transparent background. I mean, you, you can override this yourself inside of your, uh, inside of your photo editing software, but I don't recommend it. Um, I recommend you just check the box for transparent background like this, and then we're just going to export this. And then you can bring that into whatever your photo editing software is. In my case, I use Photoshop. You could also use photop.com, um, which is basically, it's almost like a clone of Photoshop that's online. I actually have no clue how they're able to do that, but I'm going to do it in Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that image. We'll notice how the background in here is this like checkered look. That's because everything that's background inside of this image has actually been exported as transparent. Well, the cool thing about that is that means you can just import your sky image. So in this case, I'm going to use the place embedded function. I'm going to bring that sky image in. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that up, but then I'm going to drop it back below this layer right here. Well, what that does is that allows you to bring this sky image in and stack it behind. Well, all that transparency in here is going to show through and it's going to allow you to have this sky image in the background. Well, the nice thing about that is that gives you the ability to do all those adjustments that you might do in Photoshop. So for example, you could add like a brightness or contrast layer to this background and you could actually adjust that image separate from your SketchUp file. And so you can use this in order to really quickly check out different uh, types of images. You can also like scale this. So if I wanna make it bigger or smaller, I can do that in the background and I can also move it around. Well, because of that transparency, it's really easy to make those adjustments in Photoshop. All right, so if you have any questions about backgrounds, feel free to leave them in the notes down below. Remember that I'm currently in a competition with SketchUp over a number of subscribers. So if you haven't clicked that subscribe button, make sure you do that. I've got some really cool stuff coming up over the next 49, 50 days or so. And I'd love to have you along for the ride. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.